you want to learn how to strike your irons better, hit longer golf shots, hit more fairways, and in essence, get good at golf. Hi everyone, my name's James, and welcome back to Get Good At Golf. If you want to do just that, make sure you do consider hitting that subscribe button, and we guarantee you will lower your handicap or your money back. So today we are talking about how to strike your irons better, because this is something which, if you're hitting your driver well, you want to capitalize on it. You want to make sure you're hitting your eight iron, for example, close to the flag, but how can you do that? So I've actually been hitting my irons quite well recently, and I've got a few trigger points which I've been working on just to make sure that I keep that up. So the first thing that I want to do is just hit you a couple of shots and explain what I'm feeling, and hopefully, you guys can kind of relate to this. So I've got an eight iron here, and I've got a green set at 160 yards. And for me, I'm hitting nice high towering fades at around 150 yards for my eight iron. You can see that one landing 145, releasing up to 148 with lots of backspin. So how do I make sure I'm hitting consistent distances with this eight iron? The key here is to make sure that we're getting a consistent strike pattern with delivering consistent speed and delivering consistent loft dynamically. Because we all know that an eight iron will have around 35 degrees of loft on there statically. So if you pick this iron off the shelf, it will have between 32 and 36, depending if it's a game improvement iron or a more traditionally lofted club. But if I want to hit this iron a long way, say if I wanted to go right, I'm a little bit short of that flag at 160, so can I? get this eight iron to come out a little bit lower, a little bit more attacking. The speed's exactly the same, but now you see this one will pitch around 155, I would think, 160 up to 164. So all I've done there is made sure that I've had a little bit more forward shaft lean into the shot. How do I do that? How do I make sure that shaft is leaning forward while still maintaining the strike? Well, there's a couple of keys here. The key is in the rotation of the body and the sequence of that rotation. So you see, if I was to just turn with no real sequence whatsoever and just hit the shot like this, you'll see that ball's going nice and straight. It's a lot shorter. The speed was still there, but unfortunately that's only gone 106 yards. As you can see, there was no real sequence there, no real separation of upper and lower body. So the key here actually starts in the takeaway. So. If I want to take this club away and separate my upper and lower body, what do you think goes first? So if I try this and I try to get my lower body first, that's the kind of shot we get. You'll see that that's, I've not struck that very well at all. I've pretty much duffed it. But if I'm trying to get that sequence to go lower body, upper body, that really doesn't work. Or if I'm just trying to get my body moving in one piece, I want to make sure the sequence actually goes upper body lower body. And I can even go into the nitty gritty of club, arms, shoulders, torso, lower body. So if I were to think that, and I'm thinking, right, this is a race between all my body parts. I want the club and the arms to move first, then the shoulders, then the torso, then the hips. And you can see now my voice has changed pitch a little bit because I'm coiled against myself. I'm like a coiled spring here, ready to release down in the opposite order. So now I'm going hips, torso, shoulders, arms, club. Now, if you were to look at that club where the position is compared to the ball, you'll see that I'm going lower body, middle body, upper body, club. And that's as simple as I want to make it. From there, because the hips have rotated and they've turned, there's loads of room here for my hands to be. Because there's loads of room for my hands to be, I can get that shaft leaning forward. If that's not the case, and this is where so many people tend to get this wrong, and this is where the really bad strikes can come from because if my hips don't turn properly out of the way first, what happens to those hips? They bump left. I try to get the hands down here. There's no room for them. So then I move up and out of the ball and then that's the shot we hit. And that's not a shot I ever want to hit, even try to hit for you for a demonstration. But you can see that ball's come out of the hosel. It wasn't a strike that we wanted at all. And it was very, very tough. So if I, make sure that sequencing is correct, it allows me to get the forward shaft lean. But there's also a couple of things that I have to do to make sure that it's consistent. You see, a lot of people talk about how we hold the golf club and do you interlock, do you overlap, do you baseball? And that's okay, you can have your own grip. I've got no problem with how people grip the club generally, but you have to have a consistent grip pressure because if I don't have a nice kind of 
fairly loose grip pressure to start with. Grip press is something which a lot of people often get wrong. And I used to get this wrong as well. So a lot of people think, right, I want to be nice and loose throughout. You can't have a loose grip pressure throughout the golf swing. It would be physically impossible. So it has to change through the golf swing. The key point here, if you want to strike your irons well, you want to hit more greens, you want to hit longer shots, is when do I increase that grip pressure? If you had a hammer here and you load up the hammer, you would increase the grip pressure at the point of transition. You would make sure that you are allowing that, even with a fishing rod, Chris was thinking straight away there, a bit of fly fishing, Chris. Soft, in, soft. Into that river there, be perfect, Earth, wouldn't it? Bit of bass. But what this allows me to do is think, right, together with the sequence, and this isn't something I'd work on all in one practice session, but I'd have a little bit of a list of what to work on throughout the off season. So I know that the sequencing's gonna take some work, and I know that from here, as I get to my point of transition, I want to allow the lower body to rotate, but I'm also just increasing that grip pressure a little bit, so then I can allow that upper body sequence to work through the shot. So again, if I hit you a couple of shots, and we try to incorporate all that into what we're thinking, you can see that again, I'm hitting nice, high, consistent fade golf shots, hopefully around a 150, 155 carry, 152, releasing out to 157, bang near that flag. And again, the key is in the consistency, but also if you look at that replay, the key is in allowing myself to load up properly, I'll have a little bit more grip pressure at the top, and whilst I'm doing that, think about those hips moving slightly towards your target, also while rotating. Almost feel like someone has the hand in your back pocket, and from the top of the backswing here, someone's pulling back towards the target. So if I'm towards you here, they're not pulling this way, they're not pulling that way, they're pulling back just at an angle where I can rotate. It's not the most flattering of angle for most people, but it's something you have to think about. You get it, but. Oh, it's something you have to think about because the way your bum moves through the golf swing is imperative to how you strike the golf ball. Honestly, if you don't move your hips or your bum properly, you're going to really struggle to take consistent golf shots. So all I'm thinking is rotation, sequence and grip pressure. And that's really allowing me to hit these consistent golf shots, to hit more greens, to lower those scores. And generally you can see again, that's a 157 carry releasing up into the 160s. And if I can control that dynamic loft, if I can control that grip pressure, I guarantee you will hit better golf shots, lower that handicap, and get good at golf. Another one. That's... Be on it. We'll have a nice. bit of that. Oh, cool. Please don't.